Hey everybody, thank you so much for joining class. Chances are you got this video link or you heard of this place uh, because a friend or a family member that maybe tried some other system or tried some other place that didn't work and they found the wellness point and they got into a system that worked for them and uh, they just wanted to share it. When something works for you or if you like something, what's the next logical thing that you do? You share it with your friends and your family members. So. Um, I hope this video creates some value for you. I don't want to waste your time. I understand people's most valuable assets are time and money, and money is replaceable, but time is not. So I promise not to keep you too long, maybe 30, 35 minutes. And I, 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 I hope if you listen to the entire video that by the end of it, I have created enough value for you to uh, you know, take action and move your family in the right direction here. So. Since you are listening to this class first, you are going to go through this process in the exact opposite that most people come through the office and become members. So usually people will contact the office and uh, set up their first appointment. They'll meet the staff. They'll fill out the paperwork. They'll meet one of the doctors. The doctors will explain everything to them. They do their first exam and their first adjustment. Then they'll do a follow-up within 24 to 48 hours after that follow-up. Um, they will be told uh, the frequency which they need to come in to correct their problem to make sure that it doesn't come back. And then within a week or two, they will attend one of our foundation class, which you are listening to right now. And then afterwards, they will become a member. So uh, being that you uh, might go through this reverse, you might be listening to this class, you might become a member, and then, uh, and then you may get your first adjustment. Um, if everything that I'm explaining to you makes sense. So uh, thank you guys so much for listening. Once again, thank you guys so much for listening. So in this class here, you are gonna listen, or you're gonna learn uh, seven things. You will learn how the adjustment works, how a, how, how, a, how a chiropractic adjustment works, why it works, why people keep returning to the office, the top three killers of all Americans, what quality health is, the key word there is quality here in, in America, um, we have drugs, medicine, and intervention that can get people to live 70, 80, 90 years. Um, but for the last 10, 15, 30 years of their life, uh, it's low quality. Uh, they need someone or something to wake them up and keep them functioning throughout the day. Uh, they're not free. They're not independent. They're uh, dependent on someone or something. And my goal uh, through this class, one of my goals is to Make sure that you have independence uh, as you get older and you keep your health and you're able to do what you want with who you want, with whoever you want to do it with as you get older. You're going to learn what a subluxation is, what causes it, and what it does to you. So most people, when they call a chiropractor for the first time, it's for pain. And uh, I hate to break it to you, but our office does not treat symptoms. So I know that's new to you. I don't want to start off on the wrong foot because chances are you might be listening to this video because you're in pain and you just want to feel better. So um, my primary goal in this office is not to treat your pain. My primary goal is to educate you the right way on what chiropractic is so that you can utilize it the right way for you and your family. So uh, when, 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 when the office and you have the same goal in mind, um, everybody wins. But when somebody has a, a goal that maybe won't be attained by a certain place, and that certain place is not trying to hit the same goal that you are, the relationship just gets really, really choppy. So one of the goals in here is to have a relationship with you guys, not a doctor-patient relationship, but a doctor-doctor relationship. So when I ask people what their most valuable asset is, most people tell me it's their house, it's their car, it's their cash, it's their 401k, it's their retirement fund. And, uh, you know, the number one cause of bankruptcy is not too big of a mortgage payment. It's not enough money saved. It's uh, not enough money in your 401k. The number one cause of bankruptcy is when you get sick and you can't afford it. So the most valuable asset that we have is not our money, it's our health. Um, so if health is our most valuable asset, whose responsibility is it? Is it, is it your doctor's responsibility to keep and make you healthy? Is it, is it the government? Is it the, your 401k? Is it Medicaid, Medicare, Social Security, Aetna, Blue Cross, your health insurance? Of course not. If it's, your most, it's, the, if it's the most valuable thing you have, if your house 
is less valuable than you and you're responsible to take care of your house, doesn't it make sense that you should take care of you too? Of course it is. So health is your most valuable asset. It's your responsibility to take care of it. It's nobody else's. It is not your insurance company's job to take care of you. So then what is health, right? That should be the next logical question to answer in this class is what is health? So most Americans have been indoctrinated falsely, right? That health is how we look or how we feel or the absence of symptoms. So if I look good, if I feel good, if I don't have any symptoms, I'm on the front of GQ magazine, I got six pack abs, I look great, I got more money in the bank than most Americans make their entire lifetime. These guys on the bottom here didn't even make it to the age of 60. They all died of cancer. You talk to everyday people that think health is how they look or how they feel. On the bottom here, do these people look good or feel good? The answer is, of course not. Now, you talk to an oncologist that'll tell you an eight pound tumor doesn't grow on your mom's pancreas because she slept wrong on the, on the couch and it hurts you know, when she bends over to her right and takes in a big deep breath. What will they tell you that these people had 20, 30, what will an oncologist tell you that was forming inside their body because an eight pound tumor does not grow overnight? What will they tell you that these individuals had in their body growing that they couldn't see, they couldn't feel, and there was no early symptom? Cancer. So these people, if they had cancer cells inside their body growing that they couldn't see, they couldn't feel, and had no early symptoms, are these people healthy or sick? The answer is they were sick, they had a disease process forming, and they didn't know it. This guy, Bob Harper, he was the trainer for The Biggest Loser, and uh, about three years ago, he had a heart attack. So he took a picture after he uh, you know, survived it, and he still got six-pack abs. He still looks good. He looks better than most people. Most people can't see their abs anymore, but at least they can see their toes, right? <laughs> um, uh, but he had a heart attack. So I'm not saying that exercise and eating right and you know trying to manage your stress is a bad thing. I think you should do all those things. All those things from the outside in you should be doing. But the one thing that people are missing, the vast majority of Americans are missing, are that is that inside taking care of that inside out system that governs health, the, the internal balance and coordination system that is inside of our body that keeps our body functioning right and adaptive to stressors. You can minimize stress all you want, but if you don't take care of the system internally that adapts you to stress, it's just a matter of time before stress gets you. So five out of six Americans, 84% will get heart disease or cancer in their lifetime. You cannot see heart disease forming, nor can you feel it. You cannot see cancer forming, nor can you feel it. So if 84% of Americans, do we die of something we can see or feel? You can't see it and you can't feel it. It's invisible, right? So does it make any sense to say, hey, I'm healthy because I look good and I feel great? It makes absolutely no sense to think that way. It is a fragmented false belief system. And if you put your anchor in something that's not real and you live that way as though it's your truth, what do you end up like? Five out of six Americans that get heart disease or cancer end up in the nursing home or they're stuck in slavery, they're, they, are, they are dependent on someone or something to wake them up and keep them functioning throughout the day. And our goal in life is to be independent and control our 24 inches. So the top three killers of all Americans are the top three killers for that exact reason, because you cannot see these things forming. They're invisible, and we get a warning sign when it's too late. So heart disease, heart disease, kills 600,000 people every single year. For half of them, their first symptom is a heart attack or stroke. And for 80% of those half, they don't make it. They go to the coroner's office and they said, hey, do you know your mom or your dad had heart disease? And they said, we had no idea. They walk the dog every single day. They run a half marathon every single year. They've lost, they've dropped 38 pounds in the last two years. Their blood, their, you know, their blood sugar levels are starting to come back into balance. <clears throat> they eat paleo, they've been you know, keto for the last six months. We had no idea. The second killer of all Americans is cancer. Five out of six people that get that diagnosis, guess how they felt when they walked in for their annual preventative checkup? They felt great. They looked great. They drive back home, they get a voicemail on their phone that says, get back in here, you have stage four cancer. Do people get the diagnosis cancer and then get sick? Or have they been sick They've been forming a disease process that they couldn't see and they couldn't feel, and then they get the diagnosis. 
the second one, of course, right? And because we don't know what health is, we don't know how to, we, we, we have no idea what the foundation is so that we can build upon it. We think health is how we feel and we just do things throughout life when we feel bad and we, we just change things to make us feel better rather than going in the right direction. We just try to not feel bad. So death by medication, the medical system knows this. When something doesn't look right, they cut it off. When something doesn't feel right, we just, here's a drug, so you can't feel it anymore. Death by medication kills almost 2,400 people every single day. About 3,000 people died on 9-11. We you know, made it a memorial, celebrated every single year. 2,400 people a day died because of a properly prescribed drug. It doesn't make the news and nobody talks about it. So my first apology for you guys, I've been known to get a little bit long-winded, <clears throat> so uh, I promise I only want to keep you about 30, 35 minutes, so I appreciate you guys chiming in, but I've also been known to get a little preachy, uh, but one thing I never want to hear you say is I believe in chiropractic or I don't believe in chiropractic, because whether you believe in what I'm telling you or not, I really don't care. I'm not trying to be rude, but I really don't care. If you told me, if I told you not to jump off of a roof, and you told me I don't believe in the law of gravity, I really don't care what you believe because it's a physical law. There are these physical laws that the creator made that if you just decide not to live congruent with the laws, you will reap what you sow. So in order to understand these laws, you need to understand how the nervous system works. So the nervous system inside of our body is the system that controls all functions of the human body. And health is not how we feel. Even though your brain controls your feelings, it, uh, it more importantly controls the way that you function. And health is how we function. According to Gray's Anatomy, the nervous system controls and coordinates all. What is the chiropractic word for all? It's all. What's the medical word for all? It's all. What's the parenting word for all? If you tell your children to pick up all the toys in their room, you don't mean all the ones that they can see or all the ones that when you walk in, you step on and it hurts your foot. You literally mean every single one of them. And that's exactly what this statement is saying. Your nervous system controls your pancreas, it controls your gallbladder, it controls your digestive system and your immune system, all structures and organs of the human body. Right? Your brain is like this generator. It produces these electrical chemical impulses and the electricity that your brain produces travels down these wires called your nerves out to every cell, organ, and tissue and gland in the body. Life is what heals the body. Now I know that sounds a little weird you know, to you, but I'll, 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 I'll explain it, right? I'm trying to make it a broad, big topic. So when you cut your finger, when you cut your finger, what do you need to fix that? Most people say, well, it's bad enough. I need to go to the doctor and get some stitches and they put some Neosporin, they wrap it in a Band-Aid, they give me a tetanus shot, some antibiotics. I go back in a week later, they take the stitches off and I go, oh my gosh, thank God for the hydrogen peroxide, the bandage, the stitches, the Neosporin, the Band-Aid. It healed my finger. The, 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 the wound is gone. And I, I say, okay, if you believe that, if you really truly believe that that is a law, go test your theory go to the grocery store, buy a steak, cut the steak. It's got blood in it, so it's bleeding. So you cut the steak and you, you put some broccoli and some essential oils and you stitch it up, you wrap it in a Band-Aid, put some, you know, whatever you want to inject, some, you know, some antibiotics. And then you put it back in the refrigerator for a week and you keep it there so it doesn't rot and then you pull it out and what happens to the wound in the meat every single time? Nothing. Stitches, Band-Aids, broccoli, it cannot heal you. The body might utilize those things as ingredients from the outside in, but the healing potential comes from the inside, right? So the whole purpose of chiropractic is just to remove any interference inside that system that coordinates that so that your body can express health and heal at its full potential. It is not designed to make you feel better, even though that is an added benefit for people that do this long enough. So real quick here, we're going to go over the anatomy of the spine so you understand what it controls. It does not control just the sensory perceptive organs outside your spine which send afferent information signals into your brain that say ouch. That is not what your spine does, right? Your spine controls and coordinates all the organ structures inside your body. It's literally the flight system control operator, right? All the incoming and outgoing signals have to be processed by this system. So, your, your, your spine consists of 24 bones, which house and protect that nerve tissue that runs inside of it. 
on top and below the bones of the spine or in between the bones is this little thing called the disc, right? So most people think the disc is a shock absorber. The shock absorber actually comes from the, the S-shaped curve of the spine. And when you lose the S-shaped curve of your spine because of stress, because of poor posture, because of extra weight that you carry around your midsection because you stare at a computer all day long at work and you're wondering where these tension headaches are coming from and your thyroid's not working right. This is where it's coming from. So those discs, they're not designed to take pressure, a ton of pressure. So what happens is when your spine loses its structure, all of that force now gets placed on the disc. And now you find these people, they bend over to grab a box, or, or they bend over to tie their shoes and then they can't stand upright for three weeks because these discs are not designed to take that much force and pressure and it was the straw that broke the camel's back. So inside the discs and the vertebra is this thing called the spinal cord and that's basically just the extension cord from your brain which carries that impulse to tell your body how to function and coordinate all the behaviors to make sure all those organs are working in unison with one another. We call it homeostasis or balance, right? That system is designed to be in a parasympathetic, slow down growth and development and repair state. When it's stuck in a state of, uh, of fight or flight or we're stuck in that gas pedal response, we say that we are subluxated. It is a subluxated, sympathetic dominance, stuck on response. So this is what happens when the spine misaligns or gets stuck. When it misaligns or gets stuck, it sticks the nervous system into sympathetic fight or flight dominance. The gas pedal inside your car, if you will, gets stuck on. So now when you're trying to take a curve, when you're trying to adapt to stress, your bucket will overflow. So let's say maybe you got a nervous system that's stuck into a state of fight or flight and the person that you work with isn't in a, in, in a uh, sympathetic dominant state and you guys each have the same deadline at work. Why does that individual over there not get headaches and doesn't have thyroid issues but you eat the same lunch, you're doing the same things, you have thyroid issues and you have headaches? It's because your inability to adapt to the stress. So we call this a vertebral subluxation. Vertebra, those are the white bones of the spine. Sub means less than or below. Lux means alignment or life. And ation is a condition of. So it's a condition when one or more of those bones move out of alignment, they get stuck. And your spinal cord doesn't just float down through those bones and discs, right? It's, it's, it's attached internally by pia mater, arachnoid mater, the dura mater. It's this connective tissue. So just like when you were a kid, and you took your friend's arm and you gave it a snake bite. Remember that when you, when you would take your two hands and you would put it on their form and you would kind of, you know, twist it until it hurt. The same thing is going on with your spinal cord and those nerve roots when those bones misalign and get stuck. It's getting stressed out. So the thing that causes our nervous system to subluxate is this thing called stress. Stress comes in three flavors, right? Physical, chemical, and emotional stress. Most people, when they hear the word stress, they just think about finances, relationships, um, you know, uh, things like, it might be like a death in the family. For kids at a younger age, they might be getting bullied or picked on at school. But thoughts, traumas, and toxins do it. For physical stress, it can be everything from, um, our, our body is actually designed to handle stress. Um, but there's good stress and bad stress. Although sports and athletics are good, healthy stress, um, sometimes some of those athletics give unwarranted stress that maybe our body was not designed to handle, such as football and wrestling and soccer when you have to headbutt a ball. That can be a physical stress to the body. But the big one in America is just sitting on your butt at a computer 40 hours a week, going home, watching Netflix, sitting in front of a computer at home, watching movies, sitting on the couch, wondering why you don't have energy. So then uh, in order um, to get more, so then you go get more rest by sitting longer, thinking you're going to get more energy. It's just a sedentary lifestyle, this physical stress, trauma, sedentary you know, lifestyle is very, very detrimental to the body. And the body's designed to move. If there's one thing that you need to understand, the body, including the spine, needs to move, right? Our brain is a motion-based sensory perceptive organ. It's not like a car where if you were to drive a car, you put X amount of gas in it and drive it from A to B, you'll have less energy 
less potential energy in it because you burn gas. Our body is actually the complete opposite. The more it sits and rests and consumes food, the less energy that it has, right? If you, if you eat a good diet, but then you, you physically train your body by exercising 30 to 60 minutes a day, burning energy. I know it sounds counterintuitive because you drive a car. Um, when, you, when you move your body, it actually gives you more energy over time. So maybe you're stuck in this cycle where you're like, I just don't have the time. I, I feel lethargic. I don't have enough energy to move. I'm telling you, if you want more energy, exercise. Exercise breaks up the physical stress pattern in life. Toxic stress, this is everything from smoking to alcohol to the stuff we put on our skin to environmental pollutants to the stuff we breathe to the foods that we eat. Uh, you know, 30, 40 years ago, food was just called food. Now we have to, food, um, is, is no longer food, it's been Frankenstein, and now we got to call regular food 30 years ago. Now we have, now it has a separate aisle called organic. Um, so the stuff they spray on our foods or inject in our foods can be toxic to us. And emotional stress, emotional stress, death, finances, relationships, a divorce, um, you know, time, you know, time management, money management, all of those things, all of those things compounded over time uh, create a disease process. So if I, if I, if I said we're going to have a chili cooking contest and I'm going to give you guys all the same ingredients and there was 30 people in this contest, they all had the same ingredients, but went to separate kitchens, created their own recipe, prepared it their own way, and then came back here when any of us had the same exact tasting chili. Of course not, right? Because each individual is going to utilize those ingredients completely differently, just like in life, right? We're going to undergo thoughts, traumas, and toxins, and our body's going to process it a certain way. And for some people, our inappropriate response to that's going to look like heart disease. For other people, it's going to be cancer. For other people, it's going to be diabetes. For some kids, it's going to be allergies. For some, it's going to be asthma. For some, it's going to be autism. For some, it's going to be ear infections and, you know, sinus congestion. So, but if we can minimize these stress, minimize stressors and increase the body's function, and its ability to adapt to stress, then over time, your issues will start to go away. So if you're gonna remember one chart, this is the chart right here, right? Um, incongruency causes stress, accumulation of stress, damage, thoughts, traumas, and toxins too much, too soon, too early on, over a period of time, will then cause the nervous system to be in the subluxated state. When it's subluxated and stuck on, your body cannot repair, cannot heal, cannot adapt to stress. So over time, it'll lead to dysfunction. Dysfunction symptoms are not the bad guy. It's like the smoke detector in your house, right? When the smoke detector in your house at 3 o'clock in the morning goes off and you've got kids upstairs, you don't go take the batteries out of the smoke detector and go back to bed. You're a dad. You're a mom. You're trying to protect your most valuable assets, which is not your house. It's the people in it. It's you and your family, right? So you go look for the fire and you put the fire out. So, uh, it, and it's much like the check engine light on your car. If you went to the mechanic and the mechanic said, hey, this is the problem with your car, X, Y, and Z. We're not going to fix the cause of the problem. We're just going to put a piece of tape over the check engine light. So symptoms, a symptom doesn't tell you where the problem is. It just tells you that there's a problem. So a subluxation can lead to dysfunction. When there's enough dysfunction, it'll, it'll lead to, uh, you know, some type of disease pattern. So they name the disease process, and rather than treating the individual and the process, they treat the disease. So what do I mean by being incongruent? Incongruency, I, well, I, I'll repeat that. Being congruent is when your beliefs, when your actions perfectly match up with your beliefs, Incongruency is when you believe one thing, but then you do another. You can't say, I believe that smoking causes cancer, but then you go out on Fridays with your buddies and you drink and you have a, and you know, you smoke a cigarette. For one day, that's not a big deal, but if you do it every day, not every day, but once a week for 15 years, that accumulation of stress damage over time is going to cause something. And disease is, invi disease is invisible. So if I smoked a cigarette today, I decided to smoke a cigarette today, how would I feel tomorrow? I wouldn't feel anything. I'd feel the same. So my fragmented false belief system would tell me 
If I smoke a cigarette and I feel good, then it did nothing to me. But in reality, it did alter function of my body. I just couldn't feel it. So incongruency always leads to stress. You can't say, I don't have time for exercise. I'm exhausted. I know that exercise, now I know after hearing this, that exercise is going to give me more energy, but I'm not going to do it because I'm too tired. That leads to, that incongruency leads to more of you sitting around and not exercising. Accumulation of stress damage over time causes subluxation. Who is the only profession in the world that can fix, can look, can find, first find a subluxation and then fix it? That's us as chiropractors, right? How often do we recommend people come in and get their nervous system checked for subluxation to keep the internal coordinating and healing system of the body working properly? We recommend you do that. We do that as chiropractors once a week. So we would recommend you, if you want to be like our family, to do that once a week. Some offices charge $50 per visit. So uh, you go, well, I got a family of, I got two kids. It's me and my wife. That's $200 a week. And you want me to come every week? That's $800 a month. Oh my gosh, I can't afford that. My, 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 that's my mortgage payment. And my mortgage payment, my house payment is more important than my health. Is that congruent or incongruent? You know the number one cause of bankruptcy is not too big of a mortgage payment. It's health problems. But now you're, you would rather invest in your house than your health. That's incongruent. You see how people, they get stuck in that cycle. They stop. When money gets involved and they're mastered by money and they don't master it, um, they start making really incongruent decisions. So sickness and disease, it's a process. It is not a person. It doesn't care that you're incongruent. It doesn't care that your mom died. It doesn't care that your dog ran away. It doesn't care that you have other medical bills. It doesn't care that you tried another chiropractor and they were too expensive and now you found this place. It doesn't care. It is a process. It doesn't care about you. It is not a person. We care about you, but it doesn't care about you. So if you do nothing about the process, does it get better or worse? Every single time, it's a physical law. Every single time, it'll get worse. So that subluxation will turn into dysfunction. There are tons of people in the community right now that treat dysfunction. If you got a heart problem, you call a cardiologist. If you have a lung issue, you call a pulmonologist. If you have a joint issue, you call a rheumatologist. This is getting fun. These are all the ologists. If you have 39-year-old acne, you call a dermatologist. If you have GI issues, you call a gastroenterologist. If you got immune system dysfunction, you call an immunologist. If you got uh, cells on your body that are starting to grow tumors, you call a oncologist. So now the tumor is so bad, they name it, they give it some type of stage four cancer name, and now they give you four weeks to live. So now you have this aha moment. You're sitting at home, or maybe you're in the doctor's office, you're in there doing their doctor report, they're going over the exam findings with you, you didn't know how to read it, and you're like, oh my gosh, I heard that one class 15 years ago online, my Aunt Ruth sent that to me, and uh, I just didn't do anything about it, and now here I am, I have the aha moment. Back here, when I was young, and I was feeling good, I was too worried about time and money. I wanted to make a bunch of money and I didn't have time to do anything. And now all of a sudden, they give me four weeks to live. So what do I do? To get my time back, I quit my job. I travel to Madison three times a week for my treatments. I start the GoFundMe page. I get really, really resourceful. And now in order for their treatments, in order to fix me, and now I know, now I know, I believe health is my most valuable asset. I will do anything to get it back. So what do you do to get it back? You take drugs. And what's the number one killer of all Americans? A properly prescribed drug. You see how people get stuck in that cycle? That is the American, uh, that's the American healthcare dream right there, folks. Everything on the top part, I don't know if you can see my cursor, everything on the top part of this green line is called prevention. Minimizing stress, keeping my nervous system working properly, keeping that internal coordinating system working right so I can adapt to stress, control my health, and stay healthy for as long as I possibly can. And that is called prevention. This down here is called treatment. Now it's no longer a debate, it's a decision. Do I want to spend my life teaching my family, my kids, my friends, my family members on how to preserve their health and keep it? Because it's a gift. Being healthy is a birthright. Most of us, 99% of Americans, 
are born healthy. We're not born with a genetic condition for most of us. But when we get over here, nobody did a genetic transplant on us. And then when we turn 67 years old, somehow, rather than taking responsibility for our failures, it is way easier to blame somebody else. Oh, it runs in the family. Oh, my mom and my dad gave it to me. But uh, that's not the case, right? You can, you can take control of that. So this is why we recommend people, one of the physical reasons why we recommend people to come in and get checked once a week, right? Because in just 14 days of your spine misaligning and getting stuck and it doesn't move properly, there's, there's the first signs of ebernation in the subchondral bone. That's exposure, wearing, and hardening of the bone because of extended fragmentation. The protective layers of, of the joint actually start to break down and degenerate. When that happens, the bones are, it's a protective mechanism. When it becomes unstable, now these little osteophytes start to form out to fuse the bone together, to fuse the joint together because it's unstable. Uh, we call that arthritis. Arthritis sets in in your spine when the joint doesn't move properly in just 14 days. Now, you can't see that on x-ray, just like if you were to sit around on a couch for 14 days and... Uh, just not really exercise, not really have the best diet. When you hop on a scale, you're not going to appear like you gained any fat. But if you were to look on the cellular level, you probably had a couple fat cells form. So if you can't see it and you can't feel it, your fragmented false belief system would tell you it's not happening. So then you do the behavior for another 14 days. And now you do it for another 14 days. Now that bad habit, now you've been doing it for three years, 14 years. And now this is how this process forms. And then you're 38 years old. It's the first time you ever see a chiropractor. And you got some low back pain. You go in, you get x-rays, and they take x-rays. And you say, this spot's degeneration. This spot right here, you got a little bit of a herniation. This spot right here, uh, there's a little bit of subchondral sclerosis. And some osteophytes form. And you, like, well, But it's just, it's just some old age. But now you're intelligent and you're smart and you can ask the right questions. You say, well, what's the age of this joint, this joint, and this joint right here, which look to seem pretty normal? And they're all the same age. So is it really age that causes arthritis or is it instability and the fact that a joint which is supposed to move hasn't moved properly for years is now starting to break down and degenerate? It's the latter. So not only do we recommend you come in to keep your spine moving properly, Number two, your spine houses and protects that nerve tissue on the inside, which coordinates the healing of every other cell, organ, and tissue in your body. So uh, it, keeps, it keeps your nervous system functioning properly, keeps your body into a state of growth and development and healing, which we all need, including kids. So this is Bonnie. Bonnie was born healthy when she was 43 years old. She was diagnosed with ovarian cancer, chemo radiation. She went into kidney failure. She had more kidney cancer. Uh, 71 years old, she's diagnosed with her second bout of kidney cancer. She's on 12 prescription drugs right now. So is she getting healthier sick? So when she was um, 62 years old, she was on seven prescription drugs. Now she's 71. She had cancer. Now she no longer has cancer. She's on 12 prescription drugs. Her body's becoming more toxic. And even though the exam says the cancer is gone, her body is still creating a disease process because of all this chemical stress. So when cancer comes back a second time, they usually say it comes back stronger. But in reality, it's the host that comes back weaker, which makes cancer appear like it's coming back stronger. When she was 74 years old, she was diagnosed with kidney cancer, her third bout. They were given, she was given six to eight months to live. It was going to take her 20-ish weeks or so to go through all the treatments. She said, no, thanks. Um, it didn't it's terrible. It's awful. It's, 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 you know, it's really gruesome. And I just want to kind of feel the best I can for as long as I can, if you're only going to give me six to eight months to live. So she just so happened. She called my, she called our office that we had up in Delafield years ago. We took x-rays of her low back. Now your spine should be no more than two degrees off. And she had over a 43 degree shift in her low back and a female the organs in this area in a female, you got sex organs, you got reproductive organs, you got filtration and elimination organs, and those nerves are being compressed, choking off life, creating some type of disease function in those organs. So if you take an x-ray of that low back or a PET scan and there's cancer in the organs and you kill it with chemo and radiation, drugs do not uh, increase function. Drugs kill a disease. It doesn't enhance function. 
You didn't get sick because of a lack of drugs. Just because you killed the disease does not enhance the function of your body. That's why the disease process kept on coming back for her. So you can see this, right? And eating broccoli is not going to fix that. Exercise is not going to fix that. Reading a book is not going to fix that. And a drug is not going to straighten that out. So we were adjusting her three times a week. And she was changing a bunch of things in her lifestyle. When she heard this message, she literally did a 180. She contacted her medical doctors uh, to help them wean her off of those prescription drugs because she knows that energy is not created nor destroyed. It's a physical law. So if she's taking 12 prescription drugs and she can cut that in half, there'll be more energy in her body. If her body is stuck in sympathetic dominance, trying to take out all these toxins just to keep her alive, she's stuck in fight or flight. And if she can wean those off, then her nervous system is going to transition. Her immune system is going to work better. Digestion is going to improve. She's going to be able to absorb more nutrients and integrate it into her cells. And in two years, she weaned herself off of all the prescription drugs. She was able to travel to Greece and Spain. She always wanted to travel but couldn't travel. Cancer went into remission and stayed into remission. So she had to sell her house, cash out her 401k. This cost her over a half million dollars. She moved back home with her sister. We got a phone call from her sister about a year later. It said, Bonnie's not gonna make it in for her appointment this week. She fell asleep last night in the recliner and just never woke up. So the reason I say that is because if Bonnie were here today, she would tell you the last two years of her life were a higher quality. What's the key word there? Quality, right? were a higher quality than the previous 40, 50, 60 years of her life. And the reason I say that is because we don't live in a third world country where we don't know where clean water comes from or how to get uh, you know, healthy food. When you go to the grocery store, even during this pandemic, um, you can still get organic food. It was just the toilet paper that we were out of. But there are blind spots in our life that, that we don't know about, we don't recognize it, and even if we eat healthy and exercise, we still don't understand how to fix a subluxation or what it is and what causes it. This is Gavin. Gavin was born healthy until autism took his world at the age of two. Since then, he's been nonverbal, constant gut ache, stimming, concentration problems, eczema, all on the back of his arms. He's having 10 to 20 seizures a day. You can see down here, he's got an EEG on, which measures his brain activity. They, so, so, we were adjusting him. After a sixth visit, he went in to have his EEG take off, taken off. The medical doctor looked at that and said, uh, what are you guys doing different? Your son's no longer having seizures. So the mom said, well, we've been seeing a chiropractor. So I get a phone call from this guy, real nice guy. He said, uh, what are you doing treating my client for seizures? And I said, I'm, I'm sorry, sir. I guess uh, there's a a lot of false information of what chiropractors do, but we don't treat symptoms, right? We're, we're treating the cause of it. His nervous system is stuck into a state of fight or flight. And this is usually because of the birth process in kids where they get pulled out via forceps, vacuum, C-section. There's a lot of wrenching, tugging, and pulling on that fragile neck at a young age, and it causes disruption in their vagus nerve, which is the biggest parasympathetic nerve in their body, so their body can't calm, it can't relax, and there's a lot of other systems that are involved because that gut-brain access to your brain, to your gut, to your intestines, to your immune system cells, that is the nerve that, can, that, that, that is able to connect the whole show. So when that thing gets... Um, uh, when the tone of the vagus nerve gets altered, your sympathetic nervous system activates and then it down regulates all of the growth and development and repair. So now you've got gut issues, you've got immune system problems, it's hard for you to pay attention. So over the course of those months, his uh, attention span improved. He would have a stim every five to 10 minutes where he would get up, flap his arms, uh, you know, make loud noises. And that went down to about every five to 10 minutes to about once an hour. His gut aches, he told us on RPM, because he can't talk, he told us on RPM, which is basically you ask him a question, super smart kid, he can perceive everything that you're saying to him, he just can't coordinate it to get a voice out, but he can type on a typewriter his answers, he said his gut has never felt so good just after eight adjustments, and after his 10th adjustment, he got up off the table and he said, see you later, see you later, after not talking his entire life. Mom got home that night. It gets even better. Mom went home that night. She sent me a text message that said, Gavin, for the first time, looked me in the eyes and said, Mom, I love you. So as a parent who takes care of these kids with special needs, what's the first telltale sign that something's not right? Something's not, something 
isn't there that used to be there. It's usually the eye contact. It's the it's being able to emotionally connect with somebody else, and uh, all of a sudden that starts to come back. What's something like that worth? Most people say it's priceless, but for some, it costs them their whole life not knowing. Mom and dad are on the brink of divorce. They're fifty to sixty thousand dollars in credit card debt. Dad, being the provider of the family, always wanted to take care of the family. Um, you know, put food on the table, put a roof over their heads. Mom, which is the nurturer, just wants her kids to all be normal and you know have a happy and great life and be able to take care of themselves. Um, and some families get robbed of that. You know, for Bonnie. Bonnie, you know, looking backwards, I didn't tell you this, but hindsight's 2020. back in her late 20s, she was married. Her and her husband got a divorce. She couldn't get pregnant. Her husband got remarried, went out and had kids. She didn't have any uh, family and kids. So looking back on this, hindsight's 2020. what do you think the cause of her infertility was? Right here, right? This was probably, instead of a 43 degree shift when she was 20, maybe it was an 18 degree shift and slowly over time it got worse. And we don't, 43-year-old women don't grow out of infertility, right? There's just a day and hour where women just drop all their eggs and they just can't get pregnant anymore. You don't grow out of infertility. You grow into ovarian cysts. You grow into a hysterectomy. You grow into ovarian cancer, right? It's just like kids, right? Kids don't grow out of ear infections. Um, they grow into sinus congestion and then they grow into you know, issues with their tonsils, and then they get their tonsils removed, and then they have lifelong breathing challenges. And because they couldn't hear when they were growing up, now they have when they're five, six, eight years old, they have, uh, you know, speech delays because they weren't able to hear as a kid because the process, nobody describes the process to you, right? And we think when we're parents and our kids are suffering, we just keep giving them antibiotics. And then when they're six years old and they're having speech delays and they're having a hard time in school, we don't make the connection because it's been a six year process and nobody's able to connect the dots. So what do you charge for that? I have no idea because the medical system, what they do is they wait till you get it and they'll say, you know what? That person now knows that health is their most valuable asset, so they'll sell their house, they'll cash out their 401k, and we can charge them a half million dollars for our procedure. But looking forward, being able to keep your health, being able to do what you want to do with whoever you want to do it with, all while saving hundreds of thousands of dollars that would otherwise go to medical bills and sick debt, looking forward, I have no idea what that amount is worth. So what we did have is this thing called the Honor Box Fee System, where we allow you to set your own fee for care. If you want to come to this chiropractic office on a regular basis, you and your family for the rest of your life, you don't have to worry about insurance benefits. If you change insurance, um, if you lost insurance, our system is completely insurance free and it allows for you to set your own fee. So the way that I explain it is this. This system is not a bargain. It's not a charity. It's not to be taken advantage of. The way I explain it is uh, it's, just a, it's just a simple, honest approach to a problem of spiraling healthcare costs, and it's only going to get worse. Um, and, it, and it depends on people being honest in order for the system to keep working. So everybody has income and everybody has expenses month to month. Most of us have a little bit more income than our expenses. We call that disposable income, where we save to go to Disney World, we buy cable, we have Netflix, Disney Plus, we buy the extra pair of shoes that we have, we put a little bit away for savings, right? What of that amount can you and your family afford to live life unsubluxated? Let's just make it easy, simple math and say it's $100 a month. So 100 divided by how many weeks are in the month? Approximately four, 100 divided by four is 25. So if you're coming in each week, you and your family, what goes in the box each week? $25, right? So with the privilege, I think it's a privilege to live life unsubluxated. I think it's a punishment to go your whole life knowing that you need to exercise, eat right, and manage your stress, but you miss the blind spot that derails most Americans. I think that's a punishment. So number one, you have to go to this class or you have to watch the foundation class to be eligible for the honor box payment system. Number two, you have to pay your monthly membership fee, which is an auto debit program. We'll explain that in just a second. Be regular with your adjustments. Why every seven to 10 days? Why every seven to 14 days minimum? 
because your spine starts to break down and degenerate if it's been fixated for longer than two weeks and we want to live in a preventative model proactive rather than a reactive model where things start to get worse and we're just trying to make sure they don't get any worse we want things to get better for you the longer you're here all fees are due on the first visit of every single week so if your first visits on a monday put something in the box on a monday if your first time here is a thursday put something in the box on a thursday our weeks here start monday and they end on saturday we're open six days a week our first day is monday so if you come in uh on Monday and you don't put something in the box, well, you're kind of breaking the rules, right? Thinking like, well, I'm going to come on Thursday. Put something in the box on Monday and then you don't have to put something in on Thursday. If you come in twice that week, we only expect you to pay for the first visit of the week. But don't skip the first visit of the week, right? And then you got to tell other people about this place, right? We want to help as many people as we possibly can. Somebody shared this video with you and we just ask that you just share it with somebody else. So the way our payment programs work you do not have to commit to come in here on a regular basis. You're just like, uh, that, was a cute, that was a cute class. He didn't convince me. Um, you know, I, I've, I've been doing this once a week for over 18 years. And I don't expect people to get the big idea and have their light bulb turn on right away. Um, that's totally fine. Everybody's in their own little boat and their own little ship going in whatever. We just hope we're going in the right direction. You can pay per visit. So you can pay $50 each time you come in. We like to reward people that take action. So you can get five adjustments for $190, which breaks down to $38 per adjustment, or you can get 10 for $240. Uh, people can use those once a week, once a month, once a year. There's no expiration on those. With inflation, every year or so, the cost of those does go up. So just be aware that if you're watching this video and it's older, you, the fee system may have changed. Most people don't want to just be a patient and pay per visit. They want to be a member of the office. They want to be a member of the country club because when you are a member, you get added little benefits like using the honor box. So when you do this, we just have an auto debit program which pays for your membership at the office. It does not pay for the adjustments or your weekly checks for your family. It just pays for you having access to the membership program and using the honor box. If it's just one person, it's $14.99 a month. If you have a family, it doesn't matter if it's a husband and wife with no kids or uh, it, or if you got a husband and wife and 18 kids, right? It's $19.99 a month for a family. That is the fee system right now. Over time, it will go up with inflation. If you start and you lock in and you don't quit, you will be grandfathered into whatever fee system you start. If you cancel at any time and you come back, then you'll be subject, you'll be subject to that change. So, that's how that program works. It's basically the same rules back here, which I explained. Come uh, sign up for that program. Be regular with your adjustment. Put your investment in the box on the first visit of every single week. It's your fee system, right? For every family, it's different. Some families can value chiropractic at $200 a month. They put $50 in the box each week. For some families, it's $160. They put $40 in the box each week. And for some families, it's $100. And they put $25 in the box each week. So that fee system is up to you. Don't tell us what that is. We don't care. That's between you got in the box. And then we just ask that uh, if you like this place, if it's different, if uh, maybe you've always wanted to try chiropractic elsewhere, but you couldn't because it was too expensive or it didn't work right. Um, we just want you to share this message with somebody else. Throw them a life preserver. I once heard an old adage of our healthcare system being this big ship that hit an iceberg. And uh, I personally think it's already hit an iceberg and it's sinking. And uh, people, people, this was the only option that they knew. So they're swimming back towards it, even though they see it going down. And uh, I'll, I'll, there's other people that were thrown off of it and they were injured. Just like you saw some people in this class that were injured because of our healthcare system. Um, and when the Coast Guard comes to pick these people up in the water, everybody's default answer of who they pick up first is what? The women, the children, and the elderly. Medicaid, Medicare, and Social Security. We know how that works. Bankrupt, bankrupt, and bankrupt. The reality is when the Coast Guard comes to pick these people up in the water to throw those life preservers out, they pick up the people that are swimming towards them. You cannot help people that do not want help. So all we're asking is that you just share this video with at least five other people to see if they want help. Throw them a life preserver. So how often, just a quick little check here, how often should you get your spine checked for subluxation? 
once every seven to 14 days. Who should get checked weekly? Everybody in your family. Uh, what is a subluxation? It is a nervous system stuck in a state of fight or flight. It's neurological stress, which, which causes an, a problem with the internal coordinating and healing system, creating the body to be in a state of dis-ease. The medical system, they know about dis-ease. They take out this hyphen and combine the word together and they treat the disease, but they do not treat the process. What causes a subluxation? The process, the three T's, thoughts, traumas, and toxins. Thoughts, traumas, and toxins, stress is anything that is incongruent. Remember that slide, go back if you forgot. Anything that is incongruent of how the body is designed to move, eat, or think is considered a stressor. How do I know, how do I know personally if I have a subluxation? I don't. 99 out of 100 times, I cannot feel it. And I don't want to live with it because I know it alters function. And I don't do things to make myself feel better. I do things to make myself function better. What do I do if I have it? I have my chiropractor fix it for me. Uh, what will happen to my spine after I get my subluxation fixed and corrected, but then I don't do anything about it? Well, just like braces on your teeth. If you don't maintain the correction by wearing the retainer, what happens? It goes back. It goes back crooked, and then you're going to be forced later on to fix it. So here's a way to stay connected, RYF, and help other people. Like us on Facebook, uh, like and follow, comment, share, connect on YouTube, leave a Google review if you liked your experience, you've been here before, this is something unique, we're always looking for good Google reviews, you can purchase a t-shirt and wear that out in public, um, adults are 22, youth are 18, and uh, check out the Wellness Point playbook, during the middle of the pandemic, I uh, wrote a book, it's a 74-page it's a book, where I explain the five foundational principles, function, food, fitness, finances, future, how to prioritize those in the right way to have them all. Um, you use the code foundations if you listen to this class, and guess what? You will um, get the book for free. I think it's going to try to redirect it over here to the website here. So if you just go to, let's see if I can, if I can open this up here. If you just go here to our website, thewellnesspointchiro.com, and click shop now, <clears throat> And then just add to cart, and when you and when you check out, when you check out, looks like here it's going to be twelve dollars and fifty cents if you do not have this code. But you'll punch the code in, right here. Add coupon code. Foundations, and you will get that for zero dollars. And just hit check out. And um, so. I think that's the end of the class here. I don't know. Uh, let's let, let me see. Let me see if I got another slide or not. Uh, I think that's it. Okay. A couple ways to stay connected. Thank you um, for listening. Uh, I may have kept you longer than 35 minutes. I apologize. I, I hope that helped you out. So if you do want a visit, just call or email us to set up your first visit. Coordinate that with the front desk and one of our doctors will help you out. 262-379-1247 or email us at twpcairo at gmail.com. Thank you so much and God bless.